Well, hello, God bless you today, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And listen, it's really me. It's actually me. Today is April Fool's Day, but you know, that's a day that believers do not celebrate. I remember after I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and I joined the Temple Church of God in Christ, my pastor was the late, great James Henry Turner. He's up there around the throne somewhere. He's been talking to the Lord and walking up in heaven and, and, and meeting the, the saints of old, oh, for quite some time now. And uh, I can't wait uh, for Jesus to come. And we're going to meet in the middle of the air and we're going to be reunited. And he, he may take me out uh, sightseeing in heaven. But he, he said this when, when, when we first gave our hearts to the Lord and we joined the church and uh, got saved in November of 77. So the next year, 78, April rolls around and all of a sudden it's April Fool's Day. And it was the first time that I heard uh, someone say, we do not celebrate lying. And I thought, well, it's April Fool's. It's hump. No, no, we don't celebrate lying. So thank God for being saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And we're living in a day where lying is the order of the day and lying has become uh, politicized and uh, it depends upon what you believe, where you stand, where you are on an issue. If you are not a part of the right party or you don't assume the right position or you don't uh, uh, assume a position that is politically correct for this group or that group, you're quickly labeled as someone who is a conspiracy theorist or that you are, you're, you're, you're pumping out misinformation or they just drop all the euphemisms and just call you a straight out liar. Well, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And the Bible teaches that all liars shall have their part uh, in the lake of fire. The Bible teaches that Satan will deceive people in the last days with lying wonders and with all deceivableness. And my friends, I want to tell you today, you got to be careful who you listen to, who influences you, because Satan can use anyone uh, from the media to your mother, anyone fr uh, from the world to your wife, guys, and from uh, uh, the White House to your husbands, uh, uh, ladies, and uh, Satan uses people to mis misuse people. The Bible teaches that in the last days, evil men and, and, uh, and deceivers would wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That is, evil men and seducers would wax worse and worse, deceiving, fooling people, but they're deceived themselves. You know what keeps you from being deceived? You know what keeps you from being fooled? Your knowledge of the word of the Lord. If you know this book and you spend time in the word of God, the word of God is going to insulate you and isolate you from these deceivers. And my friends, I'm telling you, don't be deceived right here. First, uh, second Timothy chapter three, verse number 13 says, but evil men and deceivers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But look at what Paul says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of things that you know that have been confirmed in you, knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child. Child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, the word of God, the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. The Bible is the book that's able to make you wise unto salvation. Salvation here means deliverance. It means uh, uh, being preserved. It means being brought out of situations and circumstances. And it's also salvation for when the Lord Jesus comes. But he's talking about how the scriptures are able to deliver your mind, deliver your heart, deliver you morally and spiritually. The scriptures keeps you from getting confused on what is right and wrong. If you stay in the word of God, 
orange will never be the new black. You'll never control a uh, uh, confuse up for down and down for up, right for left and left for right, uh, east for west and west for east, north for south and south for north. You get it? The word of God keeps you balanced. The word of God keeps you where you know what's going on. These scriptures are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, uh, of which is in, here he is, Christ Jesus. Oh, don't you just love Jesus? I pray that you are enjoying uh, and, and being a, a thoughtful, uh, understanding that this is Easter week. I praise the Lord, and we will celebrate this coming Sunday, the greatest thing that ever happened, uh, probably second only uh, thus far, Brother Garrett, to the, to the virgin birth. Second to the virgin birth, and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And he said, after he rose again, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. He promised his disciples that he was going to go away. Uh, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus Christ is our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our hero. Hero, And listen to this. The Bible says this about the Bible. What an endorsement that the Bible gives to itself. It says all scripture from Genesis to Revelation, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. <sighs> It is God breathed and it is profitable for, look at this, for doctrine. If you want, if you want a constitution, if you want something, my friends, that won't fail you, if you need something in writing that will always guide you, you're talking about a GPS that will never, never go down or get confused. The Bible was the GPS before man came up with it. The scriptures are good for doctrine, for reproof, that is conviction. The word of God knows it is good for correction. When you get off course, the, the word of God. God has the ability to, to put you back on course. This, this correction here is to make you right. Everybody wants to, wants to do what's right. If you, if you got a mind and you're trying to figure out the right way and you're trying to figure out what, well, which decision will be the right decision, uh, which school to go to, which job to take, how to handle unemployment, how to deal with rejection and loss, how to, how to, how to uh, uh, navigate this COVID-19 era that we're in. Should I uh, get the, the vaccination? Shouldn't I? So forth and so on. My friends, the word of God answers everything. The word of God speaks to everything. It's good for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, that God's human agent, that God's man, that every believer, this is extended to the, even the believer may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, furnished, that is thoroughly furnished literally here. That, that means that we should be complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What a book the Bible is. The Bible is going to protect us from being deceived. And tonight, tonight, I want to talk to you. I'm, I, I want to give it away, but I'm trying to hold on to it. So I better cut this off. But I want to talk to you about the power of influence and uh, how we are to influence each other for good and to influence each other to do what is right. And those warnings uh, against those who will influence us to do what is wrong. Paul says, uh, judge this. He said that no man, no man put a stumbling block nor an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I don't want to be the source of your being tripped up. I don't want to be the, the source of your being trapped. I don't want to be the source of your being misled. And I don't want you to be that in my life. God have called us to make sure as believers that we come down on the Bible side of things and uh, and we take the biblical perspective. H have you ever wondered why there's so much division in the body of Christ? Why you find Christians arguing and bickering over issues that should be settled? Can you believe that there are Christians who have disagreements on issues, black and white issues like abortion, black and white issues like uh, uh, the definition 
definition of marriage, black and white issues like how we treat one another, black and white issues on, on the existence of male and female and as to whether or not a man can make himself into a woman or a woman can turn herself into a man. Do you not know that there are Christians? <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Uh, you, you laugh if it wasn't so sad. There are Christians who are on either side of arguments like this. Uh, everything now, have you noticed everything now is about race, is about race. If, if, if a white person and a black person disagrees on any issue, uh, it has to be race. It can't be that two pre- people just honestly have a disagreement. While I am not one of those who say that racism does not exist because we all know that it does, but it's not everywhere. I heard someone say one time that it's no, that America has not changed since the days of Martin Luther King. We haven't changed since the 50s and the 60s. I said, man, you just lost all credibility with me because that's a lie. All you got to do is just go to the mall and you'll see that that's a lie and watch the, the, the huge number of interracial couples walking down the streets in the mall, walking down the mall holding hands. Ask Emmett Till has times changed. He'll let you know you, the, the, uh, he was killed and lynched for, for allegedly whistling at a white woman. And we live in a day now where uh, the guys are brothers and half of them, the pants hanging off their rear ends. They got the, got the, the hip hop look and all that and got this uh, white lady on, on their arm and ain't nobody, no one is saying a word because there's nothing to be said. Uh, they have that, that choice, they have that right, leave them alone. I suggest that no harm be brought to them. They're doing no harm to anyone. I hope they live right. I hope I hope they I hope they obey biblical principles. I hope they get right with God and 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 serve the Lord with gladness. And I hope that if they love each other, they get married and go and have a wonderful family and go forth. But to say that times haven't changed, my friends, times have. My last little rant that I'm closing for the day. We need to turn back to the God of the Bible. We need to pay attention to what's going on. And my friends. Do this for Brother Wooden and you will do yourself a big favor. Don't trust everything you see in the media. Look a little differently. Look a little further. Look past uh, uh, many of the things that's being said because some of the, we, we're in a day now where just flat out lies are being told to people and people are buying them. But I'll tell you one place where you won't find a lie. You won't find a lie. You will discover the greatest discovery in all of creation, and that is God's truth in the Bible. Yes, right here in the Bible. So I want you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Join me in person. Join me online. Join me. Join me. Join me. Thank God for our friends and those friends that I hear from from all over the country. I was talking to a mighty man of God just yesterday in, from southern Indiana uh, in that area. I've talked to uh, people. I've, been, I've talked to people who are, who are contacting us literally from all over and they're appreciating the message. I appreciate you. Thank you for those words of encouragement. They're right on time. Thank you for appreciating the Bible. Man, I hear, uh, Gary, people appreciate the Bible. And, and you know what? Man, I'm glad you that people appreciate the Bible. Because if in this ministry, if you don't, if you don't want the Bible, you, you're not going to too much like Upper Room because... One of the reasons why I try to preach as much Bible and teach as much Bible as I, I possibly can, I, I just think the story of my life, my friends, is is just a bored one, a boring one. I mean, that's if I if I had to describe myself, not literally, but proverbially, I was born by the river in a little tent, and just like the river, I've been running ever since. But God's story, it never gets old, it never gets worn, it's always new. So join me tonight, right here. At the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for, you guessed it, Bible study. (laughs) Yeah, I like doing that. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. Make it a great day. God bless.